is that we have a uh, Japanese rice leaf bog in southern Alberta and actually it's, this has been around here for a long time and I, I didn't realize this. I just passed this picture around and some of the uh, damage. The uh, damage caused by this insect, uh, it's known as the green grass bog in Canada, but the, if, you, if you search the internet you will see that there's hardly anything for this uh, green grass bog and a lot more information on the uh, rice leaf bog. So that's because it's a major pest in, uh, in Japan in rice. And the damage looks like this, uh, you will have to look carefully. Uh, this, uh, Foliage is a little bit wilted, but it, it basically the damage looks like it was a flea beetle on canola, except except this is this damage is on, uh, on cereals. So just pass this around and you can, you can look at the uh, foliage. Uh, so here is a, here's a photograph also. Uh, the life cycle for this insect was something like this: uh, they uh, they will lay eggs on the stubble and the only way that you will get this insect as a pest is, is, is if you plant cereal upon cereal. So both of the examples that were brought to the research station uh, were, were uh, wheat plants that have been planted on, uh, on uh, cereal stubble. And they lay the eggs on the stubble and then the, uh, the baby bugs, uh, we call them nymphs, they are actually in the same family as the ligos. Uh, the family is called uh, Miridae. And they will uh, start feeding on the, on the foliage of uh, cereals and they will destroy the surface, the epidermis of the leaf, so it will look like a uh, uh, flea beetle damage. This is what it looks like. Anybody seen that uh, damage before or come across? Yeah. Well, for the plants are growing or uh, yield issues? Yeah, they, uh, the question is are there any yield issues and that's a really good question. Uh, it happens so rarely that uh, no one has actually looked at what impact it has on yield. Uh, it seems that unless the damage is very severe the plants can compensate for it and they will outgrow it. So uh, as far as I know it's not worthwhile to spray it. It doesn't look very uh, aesthetically pleasing on the plants I guess they will overgrow it. So that's just a, a quick uh, comment on something new and interesting. Every summer we seem to learn something new about some insects. That was my, uh, my new talk. Uh, next. I think if we, were, if we were going to have a competition on who works on the most beautiful insect, I think I'll win easily. Look, look at that photo. Isn't that a beautiful insect? <laughs> okay. I guess I guess it's all a matter of perspective. It looks a, it's a very beautiful insect, but if you look at the damage caused by this insect, I guess it's not so beautiful anymore. Okay. This is the uh, infamous uh, cereal leaf beetle, and this is probably one of the uh, potentially one of the worst insect pests in cereal crops. Uh, it's, uh, it's such a, I guess, a bad news story that uh, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency had, a, had established a quarantine for this insect uh, for the past 10-20 years. And for a while, when we discovered that the beetle was in southern Alberta, we had to uh, ask everyone to fumigate their hay before it could be exported. And that is because in California, they do not have the cereal leaf beetle and uh, they want to keep it out of their jurisdiction and they, want, they, uh, they do not accept uh, hay imports unless they have been fumigated they are free of the cereal leaf beetle. So it's a, it's a serious pest, not just because of the potential damage, but also because of the political implications and export uh, restrictions. Did it make it down there? No, not yet. No. no. It's kind of like uh, <laughs> just like England managing to keep the uh, Colorado potato beetle out. Uh, so as as or Alberta and the rats. Alberta and the rats, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this this insect, uh, we discovered it uh, actually just across the border from the research station in 2005. And we were quite concerned when we discovered it because uh, the, the, uh, the potential yield losses of oats, according to uh, US research, is 55%. Uh, wheat, barley, 20-30% yield losses, and that's because both the adults and the larvae feed on the foliage. <clears throat> now, this was a really bad news story. Now, here comes the good news. It looks like this beetle is not going to become a pest for us. And we have a little tiny wasp to thank for it. And, uh, uh, 
if, if you manage to see the wasp, uh, I will come and shake your hand, even though I will give you this, uh, this uh, magnifying glass. And I won't tell you anything else other than the wasp is only about two millimeters long and about one millimeter wide. So it's very, very tiny. And I, I don't know if it's still alive. Hopefully it's still alive. It was alive a while ago. Uh, this tiny wasp goes by the uh, Latin name of uh, Tetrasticus julis. And uh, how come you're not writing it down? There is a test at the end of the session, isn't there? So they, we, don't, we, don't have, we don't have a common name for these uh, beneficial insects. They all go by these fancy Latin names. Uh, we just like to call it for sure T. Julius, and I hope you will remember this name, T. Julius. This is the wasp that we have to thank for the cereal leaf beetle not becoming a serious pest in, uh, in our region. Uh, we were lucky that when the uh, cereal leaf beetle came to Alberta, it came along with its uh, main natural enemy, this T. Julius. And most of the time, you will hear uh, in entomology meetings, whenever there is a talk about biological control and inter integrated pest management, biological control is usually the secondary strategy and insecticide is the primary strategy. This is one of the few examples where biological control is the central strategy and insecticides or cultural controls are the supporting strategies uh, to control this pest. So I, uh, I like to talk about this incident a lot because it provides a rare example of a situation in an actual uh, annual field crop in the prairies where biological control is the key, key uh, control strategy. So we have been monitoring this this uh, T. Julius uh, parasitism of cereal leaf beetle and we're quite happy to report that it is increasing every year. Uh, in 2006-2007 the parasitism level was about 9%. Uh, it's now close to 40% in most regions. So the main point that I want to remind you is that uh, if you see the cereal leaf beetle in your fields, uh, you, you may see some damage by the larva but uh, you will also see a lot of uh, these beneficial insects, so there's no need to panic and start spraying uh, for it. It looks like the biological control agent is going to do its, its trick and uh, help us to uh, keep it away and hopefully we don't worry too much about it. Uh, just on a side note, uh, 